congratulations for coming out from two points of view. Congratulations, first of all, for braving the cold. Uh, and, and congratulations for, for yeah, having the courage to, to, to turn up at a seminar like this. Uh, because so often, you know, the, 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 and, and maybe why there's a few vacant seats around the room is the fact that people think, oh, like if, if people see me turning up, they'll think I've got a problem in this area. Uh, and, and, and so um, for that reason, people sort of tend to stay away. And notoriously, people who do have a problem tend to stay away because of the, the, uh, the, um, the possibility of, 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 of being labelled or whatever or being recognised. So, congratulations. Um, the, uh, the internet, of course, is a very um, uh, pervasive and invasive uh, thing. You know, it's got its many upsides, of course. And isn't it always the way, like, the, you know, where it is that the Lord gives a good gift, um, Satan has a way of, of being able to, to pour his uh, foulness and poison into that good gift. And we look at uh, so many things, um, alcohol, um, uh, drugs, in terms of uh, the, the, the good thing for for um, uh, medicine, etc., but in turn being used for evil. Uh, even nuclear power um, it can be a, a wonderful gift, but on the other hand, it can blow societies apart. Um, and the internet is no different. It, it's got uh, many, many benefits, although sometimes you wonder when you get caught with a computer and it's, you know, playing up and you can't do what you're supposed to do and whatever, but, um, but you know, it's, it's to one degree or another made our lives a whole lot easier, a whole lot more complicated in other ways. Um, but the, uh, the internet um, also uh, is home to a, a very pervasive thing in terms of the pornography industry. Uh, back in 2006, um, it's the last uh, statistics that I have, but um, there's uh, something like um, 20.5 billion um, pornographic emails being sent out weekly. And, it, and what, it, what it meant was that, back in 2006, what it meant was that for every internet user, um, uh, Per, you know, per capita, there was uh, 4.5 pornographic emails being sent uh, across the world, and that was 2006. It's uh, increased a whole lot more now. So it's uh, not surprising that we might uh, go to the internet and um, you know, be doing something completely innocent, um, but a uh, uh, pop up comes, or we open an email, or whatever and there is uh, uh, pornographic I images that are, that are there that begin to, to can make their way into to our lives. Matter of fact, I uh, want to just uh, look at the ways in which that may happen. And um, I have a little diagram here of... Uh, the heart, and uh, right there, there's a, uh, a fish hook. And um, what so often happens is that the, uh, a, a, an image actually um, hooks itself into the human heart. Now, going back to, 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 to kids who might be using the internet, um, it's just going to be a, a curiosity about sexuality. It's all talked about at school and whatever, and a, uh, an image um, is somehow uh, released onto, you know, on, onto the screen. And uh, the bottom line there, curiosity. And the kids can go, whoa, this is what the, the other kids were talking about. What's the, let, let me have a look at this. Uh, and so... Um, they can, can look. But on the other hand, in terms of adults, 
um, that's not I just made this, this afternoon and it's not exactly coming out best on the I haven't learned how to do PowerPoint yet I'm going to do this today. <laughs> um, but uh, the other thing in our hearts is um, uh, lust loneliness pain longing um, and what happens is that these images, I mean, sexuality is a very, very powerful thing. It's a wonderful, again, beautiful gift from God. Just that, uh, you know, we are designed to, uh, you know, and, and given this beautiful gift of sexuality, which is the flip side of spirituality. <coughs> and, um, uh, and so we are designed to be attracted to the, uh, the human body. But of course, God is, given parameters in which they, that, that, they, that can be used um, and, and, and how we respond to our attractions, how we um, guide and, and uh, boundary our attractions. Um, so the heart has got a, a natural attraction to the human body. Um, there is certainly curiosity. There can be lust. There can be loneliness, pain. And, and what happens is that an image we see an image, um, and it's, it hooks into something in the heart. I remember uh, from John, I recall from John, um, Jesus, when he was going to the, uh, the cross, and um, he said, uh, Satan has nothing in me. In other words, Satan has, you know, there's no sin within me that Satan can hook. Um, but so often in the, you know, in, in the redeemed heart, there is still um, sin and the old person that we are putting to death. Um, as uh, we, we live in the new creation, the new creature, but the old is being put to death. And so often there's, there's stuff in there that can still be hooked, as it were. And so, um, the, uh, we, we, we tend to be um, triggered and uh, go into uh, what we call um, mental preoccupation. We think, wow, that was, uh, that was interesting. What can happen is we think um, uh, we're hooked. We can close it down very quickly. Like, I'm not going to look at that. That's not what I, I wanted to do. But then we come back and go, hmm, just you know, maybe in a lonely day mainly at a point when we're feeling a longing or some pain or a scar, to think, that image, I'll just go back and have a quick look at that, that image. I'm not going to dwell on it, I'll just, just have a look. Um, and th that's how it is that we so um, easily can be, I've actually got the wrong one up, this won't change, sorry. Um, come to here. Here we go. Same thing, um, the last thing, the loneliness. We, we see the image and we experience pleasure. Um, we can close it down very quickly, but um, sometime later we, we, we go back and, and, and have another look and we get into another whole cycle here. We recall what we saw, there's a fascination, we explore, um, what it was that we saw, we can then close it down again. I'm going to ignore that. I'm not going to look at that. That's not what I should be looking at. But the same things can come back at some other time. And so we recall again. And um, then we uh, can um, uh, go back with some extended looks, reinforced. And that um, M letter there stands for, for masturbation. In, inevitably, people um, uh, end up masturbating, especially men, I guess, but also women, to, to pornography. And, and, and what happens when, mas when there's um, pornography, when there's the image, and masturbation takes place? There are powerful associations that are actually formed in the brain. And... Uh, we're forming neural pathways all the time, new neural pathways all the time. But 
where does that uh, uh, release of orgasm, there's um, an orgasm, there's the, the, the bonding chemical, which is called oxytocin. And the Lord has built that into our body, uh, clearly because of the fact that when we, you know, we're meant to have orgasm in, in, in marital love, and the whole purpose of, of oxytocin is to bond husband and wife together. So that's, that's just one of, the, one of the chemicals that's released at orgasm. But when we are, are having orgasm or masturbating to something that is, you know, we're not with our husband or wife, then we actually are bonding to the image or even bonding to the, the computer and the whole activity that's taking place. So there's a, a, a kind of a cycle, uh, a compulsive cycle that um, develops here. So I've got here bonding and neural association. We, we form a powerful neural association in the brain. And um, that you know, it, it is, is something that's being reinforced. And so we're going to find that we're, we'll, we will... Um, go back to it time and time again and then it's what we call boundary creep because the other um, uh, chemical that is released in, in looking at pornography is adrenaline from the point of view that we are doing something that we shouldn't be doing we, 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 we know that we shouldn't be doing this there's just something wrong uh, even non-Christians no, that there's just something not quite right about it. Even though the world, on the surface, says, you know, hey, porn's natural, everybody does it. Because of the fact that we're made in the image of God, and because of the fact that his eternal nature and divine power is seen in what it is that he has created, and he's created the gift of sexuality, his divine power, eternal nature is, is actually seen in, in, in sexuality deep, deep down, people know that somehow this is not what sexuality was made for. Even if it's <coughs> subconscious, there is that knowledge. And so, when they are contravening, when we contravene God's law, uh, we, we recognise, wow, like, you know, something is happening here that, that I, I, sh I shouldn't be doing. And, and so there's adrenaline that is, is, is released because there's a certain excitement to the thing. And um, that adrenaline, you know, well, brings further excitement. Um, now, what happens is that when you repeat the... Uh, the, the activity, same old, same old, becomes a bit boring. So, we've got to look to find something just a bit more exciting. Something that will, you know, the, the old that I was looking at, those particular images or that particular style of thing that I was looking at, it's not as exciting as it used to be. I, 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 I need some, some more excitement basically what I'm saying is I need more adrenaline released into my life into my my body and so I'll go looking for something just perhaps a bit more risque perhaps initially just looking at semi-clothed people and and, and 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 that was bringing an excitement but after a few months that's just not quite what it is that I want to so like it's same old, same old. It's getting boring. So maybe a little less clothing, perhaps a lot less clothing, um, or you know, starting to look at at um, activities, sexual activities, and so forth that people do, uh, which become more and more um, risque, more and more uh, demeaning. Um, more and more perverted and, and there's just a, a slow 
what I call boundary creep, whereby just breaking new in, 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 into new areas in order to get more excitement. This is how the compulsion um, works. Um, and so uh, that we come round to, to debauchery and uh, addiction, where it is that people are just addicted to, to internet pornography. And one of the sad things is that when they uh, be, be, become addicted, um, they lose the, uh, the beauty of true intimacy. And, and, and so often then in, when they're having sex, when, you know, if it's if it within a marriage, um, they can, can be, well, the excitement's not there, the adrenaline's not there to start off with because to have, make love with my wife is a perfectly legitimate and natural and beautiful thing to do. So I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm not doing anything that is risque, so the adrenaline's not there. In fact, the, the, um, the chemicals that are produced in pure love, in, 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 in sexual love as God has designed, come through the pituitary gland. And, and that's where pure love is experienced. But false intimacy inevitably involves adrenaline. And where we've associated sex now with adrenaline, we come in pure intimacy to say, well, this is boring. I need the excitement. I need the release. I need the, you know, rather than the, 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 the beauty of that union and consummation and just the deep satisfaction of pure marital love, which is far more glorious than the adrenaline thing. But the lie is, I need the adrenaline. I need the adrenaline. And so, pornography itself actually undermines marital love. And one of the sad things is that often people who become uh, addicted or, or have compulsions within that pornography uh, feel they're going to actually drag that into the marital relationship. So, um, I'll just uh, finish this other one that I started here initially just the what may happen again the uh, there's a trigger we have come to the point where um, we are beginning to rely on pornography just to get through life find that life is pretty boring unless I get that release of adrenaline and unless that particular um, uh, neural pathway in my brain and, and, and my body is actually being exercised. Um, uh, and so there's the depression from within or the pain from within. There's an image or something that triggers from the outside and there's this sense of, wow, I, 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 I want to go and you know, sort of look at some more pornography. And so um, there's that planning, mental preoccupation. When can I do that? Like when, either, when will it be safe at home? When will the wife be out and the kids be in bed or the kids be out and I'll be home by myself? When can I, you know, when's the, the planning, just working out or even uh, working out, well, if I can't do it at home, where can I do it? Where can I go to an internet cafe? Can I go here? Can I go there? Just the mental preoccupation. And, and, and then the ritual. If it's being done at home and, and uh, just a sense of, well, I just make sure that honey's in bed. Like, you know, honey, I've just got to stay up tonight. I've got um, work on the stock market I've got to do. Or I've got work from the office I've got to finish. Or I've got, I'm going to go fishing at the weekend. I want to check the tides and want to check the weather and want to check this. You go to bed and, and I'll be in later. And you know, just, this is all part of the ritual. Um, it actually involves deceit, of course, so it's not just sexual sin, it's sin sort of um, 
uh, blossoming is the wrong word, but you know what I mean, just dividing into many different areas. Um, and, and, and so just sort of wait for a while and then sort of go for a walk through the house just to make sure that yeah, the kids are asleep and in the bedroom, yes, honey's asleep. Um, I'll just maybe get a Coke or a glass of red or something and just go back and just quietly close the study door and sit down. And I'm, I'm going to check the, the tides. I am, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. It's kind of sort of just self-talk that is kind of in denial. But meantime, the adrenaline is building up go online and check the, the, um, the tides first of all and just quickly open the door yes everything's quiet out there and then sort of just type in the, the, the sites of the uh, surf um, for pornography that's the ritual phase of, of the addiction um, or the compulsion and so there's, um, there's acting out, the person acts out, and then uh, what we have, the consequences. Um, initially the consequences are guilt and shame. And so they go into the heart. So not only might there be loneliness and lust and, 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 and pain from things that happened in the past or whatever, and longing and curiosity in the heart, but now there's also guilt and shame in the heart. Perhaps even self-hatred. I hate myself for doing this, but on the other hand, I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from doing it. I'm weak. This, this sense in, in, in the heart, and all that does is actually compact the heart's need to escape some more. And, and, and so, Inevitably, it's not going to be too long feeling that weight in the heart, that sin in the heart, that um, the next trigger comes along and back into the mental preoccupation, when can I do this, what night's going to be safe, when, whatever, what excuses can I use, all of the mental preoccupation and the planning that comes again to the ritual, comes again to the acting out that compacts the shame and guilt and around we go and around we go and around we go and it becomes just a very compulsive and um, addictive thing. What do you think might be some of the, uh, the consequences of, uh, of internet pornography? Of What might be some of the, the consequences? Maybe sexual offending against um, third parties. Maybe. Sorry, a sexual sexual offending against other people, other yes, other genders. Yes, well, certainly um, taking advantage of, of 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 other people. I mean, even the porn <coughs> actors. I mean, we need really to have compassion for them, not to be taking advantage of. Of them, but of course the other thing that happens in Boundary Creek is um, uh, pushing younger and younger, so that uh, a lot of people who have child pornography on their computer didn't set out to have child pornography or underage pornography on their computer. So often, what's happened is they've thought, you know. Just you know, go for the younger, like for, for, for the stronger, the more beautiful. Um, early 20s, there's kind of an association in that because, hey, that was the time before all the problems of life set in. That was the time before I had a mortgage and that was the time before I had you know, too much responsibility in my job. And that was the time before um, you know, I had a few failures under my belt in terms of things that had happened. That those wonderful years, those early 20s, and, and it's kind of, you know, because people are escaping, they will go to the, to, to look to the, the, 
you know, the, the age of where things were good, things were better. And so often I'll go back to younger and, and sort of looking at people in the young 20s and say, as I said, same old, same old, gets just a little boring. So just, just a bit younger, maybe look for some 18 year olds. And before you know it, they've gone younger than they are. Like, oh, I'm sure she was only 14. Oh, switch it off. Quickly close it down. I just looked at something that was, I promised myself I would never look at such a, such a thing. You know, but then, a few weeks later, that was interesting. And then there's a thought, well, I've, I've actually already seen it. Like, I've actually, I've done it. I'll just go back and look again, just for you know, and, and and so people can go back and look at the younger breaking boundaries. See, pornography inevitably is going to be a constant breaking of boundaries, which you know make, makes the sites more and more um, uh, perverted, more and more degraded, more and more debauchery, um, because of the need for something more uh, exciting. Um, so yes, taking advantage of other people. One of the other things is that we tend to therefore objectify people and in internet pornography because you're just looking at bodies and you're not interacting with real people. Well, you're, well, you're seeing real people, but there's not an interaction, but you're actually coming to that point of intimacy. I mean, you know, the, the Lord you know, has designed nakedness to be that special gift between husband and wife. Uh, and so there's, there's intimacy there. But when you're just looking at it constantly, you know, a thousand different bodies, you know, being, um, looking past uh, as you surf the net, uh, intimacy is just drained of, of its glory and you become attached in, to, to, to false intimacy. You're getting, you're sort of seeing you know, what is meant for marriage and just put out there like it's on the supermarket shelf. And yeah, like it's, I suppose, really comparing what uh, uh, a high-class meal at a French restaurant with perhaps eating from a rubbish tip is the, you know, perhaps an analogy that we can draw. But that's what's done to intimacy. It undermines intimacy. And so consequently, people actually lose the capacity for true intimacy because uh, it, it's been cheapened and shortcuts have been taken and uh, just don't really know how to connect at a deeper and truer level. So that's another um, consequence of pornography. Anybody think of any others? Is the, oh, I guess the guilt, the weight of guilt and shame, would that lead to depression? Yes, yes, depression, it, it, indeed, because spiral, of, you're talking about a spiral down, really. You're talking about a spiral down, and it's a it's a sinful spiral, and of course, yes, because of the fact that see the glory of our sexuality, we know that somehow we're cheating ourselves of the truth, and 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 even if it's not a conscious thought up there, it's something, you know, in, in terms of. The, being made in the image of God and knowing, in, in, therefore, inherently what the truth is, we just know that we've missed the mark, which, of course, is the meaning of the word sin. Uh, and we may not, you know, people outside in the world may not call it sin, but they somehow recognise they've missed the mark. And, and that, indeed, can, can bring a, a weight of depression. Yeah. I think... Uh all of our feelings um, get degraded by the unreality of everything that we're looking at. 
So, for example, um, it's not just with matters of sex, but it's also with matters of violence. Yes. You, you mentioned violence. about uh, mm. about going towards younger people, but there's also people get addicted to violent sex, which is something that in and their own relationships they'd have find abhorrent. That's right. Well. <laughs> Uh, find a borrowed initially, but yes. unfortunately, then sort of seek to actually right. introduce that That's into right. their own relationships. And the point for, for mm. those who may not have heard is violence mm. is, becomes a problem. You know, one of the again the boundary creep and this this um, uh, very um, subtle and invasive um, problem of the internet. What was pornography? back in the 50s and 60s became mainstream TV in the 70s and 80s. What was pornography in the 70s and 80s became mainstream TV in the, the 90s and noughties. That's you know, perhaps uh, an appropriate um, uh, terminology for those years. And, and so the pornography industry, in order to keep making money, have got to push boundaries and so what's happening, what's happening in the last 10 years in particular is um, the association of sex and violence because that gets the adrenaline going. And, and, and so violence is being uh, you know, interwoven into sexuality and so, sorry, into pornography. And so you get um, uh, sadism and, and masochism and bondage and um, uh, you know, those kind of things. And see, the, the, the problem for society is what does that say about what's going to be normal in 10 years' time in terms of what's on TV and how it is that people are living their lives? So all the time that this beautiful gift of sexuality that God has given is just being devoured. I really believe that we are living in end times. I mean, we've been living in end times now for 2,000 years, but I think that those 2,000, there's, there's a climax coming from the point of view that Satan has unleashed this you know, a flood of filth onto society in an unprecedented way. And, and what it is really doing is striking at the image of God in humanity. Because our sexuality in a powerful way reflects who God is. God is love. God is creativity. God is a God of covenant. God is a God of great joy and, uh, and, and pleasure. I mean, these are just you know, the, the, the initial um, characteristics of God that we can think of. And we recognize that love, that Creativity, creation, creativity, covenant, joy and pleasure are all you know, inherent within sexuality. And so our sexuality is really a, a prime revelation of the image of God. And so as Satan is attacking that in society uh, in the way that he is at present, he is having one last big go at attacking um, the... the the glory and the, the, the sovereignty of God, the very person, personhood of God. Um, and, and so we're actually seeing this, which is one of the reasons why it is that we as Christians can need to be, A, guarding our own hearts from this stuff, but also reaching out with good news um, about the way that people can be set free, and, you know, because the gospel is powerful to set free. Just as we finish this session, I, I guess the other thing is that far apart from pornography is also the chat room, um, an interactive um, uh, um, uh, sites that are available on um, the internet as well. And, and whereas men tend more towards pornography because men are more visually oriented, Women who are more relationally oriented uh, tend more to the uh, the chat rooms and and filling up their their loneliness, um, seeking to meet their, their loneliness by um, going to chat rooms and 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 talking with people. 
And of course, in chat rooms, um, we don't know who we're talking to because there are people have out, out there personas. In fact, a lot of people, you know, one of the big things is to create personas on the internet. And uh, the more that you can create personas and draw people in, um, the, uh, the more fun it is. Again, the, the adrenaline. Um, but, but women sort of can go on there just in order to find somebody to talk to, to relieve their loneliness. And that so often turns to, to dirty talk and from there to, to liaisons and so forth. In fact, um, interestingly enough, um, certain set of statistics that I've seen shows that, it, that, that, that women uh, tend to, to act out one-on-one um, -on -one, um, more than men from the, in, in terms of liaisons on the internet, which is perhaps not possible because you think it's got to be the same number, see? But, with, but, but actually that there is a higher degree of women who actually um, arrange to have uh, liaisons with people that they've met on the, the internet. Uh, and again, you know, I've ministered many Christian women who didn't set out to do that. In their loneliness, they set out to, to, to just find somebody to talk to, to find a soulmate that they could talk to. But uh, the soulmate sort of drew them in and, and um, so often, you know, let's meet for coffee somewhere. And uh, yeah, that leads to one thing to another to another. So uh, that's another um, uh, aspect of of, of internet um, sexual brokenness, I suppose, sexual um, addiction. And, yeah. Are there any questions arising from what it is that um, I've shared so far? I certainly will repeat those for the sake of the video. question is, is sex, sex addiction a medical um, condition, you know, or, or are you saying is it a legitimate addiction? Well, I, I don't know exactly what I'm saying to be honest, and I don't really know if people who bandy that term around really know what it is either. Well, I, 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 you sort of say, I, oh, I, I couldn't I, help it, I'm addicted. Yeah, I, I bandy that term around because sex addiction is, is, um, is a real problem. Um, and sex addiction basically can be defined as a way in which people um, medicate or escape from uh, the pressures of life um, through, uh, um, uh, well, basically through orgasm and, and whatever uh, means that they need to, to achieve that. Um, and that precludes outside a loving relationship, of course. And that it can that sex addiction can either be um, a, a continual thing or in a binge of activities. So, sex addiction is, is very similar to alcoholism, drug addiction, etc. Alcoholism, you know, there can be the alcoholics who are the wardrobe drinkers who can't get by a day, you know, can't get through a day without having, you know, a, a, a flask in the bedside table when they wake up for a, for a, a, you know, a swig and uh, then in the wardrobe, sorry, in the um, glove boxes of the car as they drive to work or to the station and then in the, the wardrobe, in the, the cupboard at work or in the desk or whatever and, and just through the day just keeping themselves topped up or else you know, daily but daily at the pub because they need that alcohol. Um, there's that, that uh, form of just constant, um, or um, alternatively binging where they can go for months, years sometimes without a drink and then something happens, trigger, bang, and they'll binge for, for weeks. Um, sex addiction is a similar thing 
uh, from the point of view that, that the chemical, actually are those chemicals that I talked about, first of all adrenaline, um, but also the, um, the endorphins that are released uh, in the brain, again, th with orgasm. Um, and and, and that, the endorphins are the thing that sort of bring that sense of... <sighs> just that sense of peace and everything is wonderful that lasts for that long until the guilt and the shame come back in and the heart is further compacted. Uh, and, and so the sex addict actually carries in or his or her body the chemicals that they are relying on in order to just get through life. Um, uh, and yeah, it, 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 sex addiction, I believe, um, is the most pervasive addiction in society, but the one that is not recognised for two reasons. Um, the, the, the powers that be often are as much involved as anybody else in this denial, uh, but also the big end of town has got so much money invested in it. All right, well, thanks very much, Ron. We're going to break for supper. We'll have about a 15 minute supper break and then we'll come back. Uh, we've been dealing with the problem. I think next talk we're dealing with the solution. Yes. Great.